Let me show you guys an example on how this is going to work. So, now I will show you how to combine sine x plus square root of 3 cosine x into a cosine function. So, first of all, you see, this is the same as 1 times sine x. So we know little a is equal to 1 in our situation. And from here, you see that little b is equal to square root of 3. And here we have the condition on alpha, and this is the condition on capital A. I think this is easier, so let's get to work on this first. So from here, we know capital A squared is equal to little a squared, which is 1 squared, and plus little b squared, which is square root of 3 squared. And we have capital A squared is equal to this is 1, this is 3. When you add them up, you get 4. And now, a squared is equal to 4. What's the value of a? In fact, we have two answers to this, isn't it? We know that capital A can be equal to positive 2, or it can also be equal to negative 2. Now the question is, which one are we going to use? The answer to that is, it depends. It depends on the alpha value that we are going to use later on. So this is what I mean by, we have, in fact, infinitely many combinations of capital A and alpha to make this work, okay? So, now let's take a look at this right here. We have tangent of alpha that's equal to negative a over b. In our case, we will have 1 over square root of 3. Now, we have to ask ourselves, what angle so that tangent of that angle will give us negative 1 over square root of 3? I would suggest you guys do not simply just take the inverse tangent on both sides because if you do that, sometimes you will be making a technical mistake. And if you do that, you actually don't know which A value to use unless you, you know, have some more conditions that you have. But anyway, let me show you guys by drawing picture, okay? So that will also explain um, all these details with you guys as well. All right. To do so, we have to recall the definition of tangent on the unit circle or on the xy plane, which is going to be y over x, right? And you see, both of the y and x can be negative or positive, so that means I can bring the negative to the top or to the bottom. When you bring the negative to the top, this is negative 1 over square root of 3. So what does this tell us? This tells us that, let me just write this down, we can take y to be negative 1, and x to be positive square root of 3. And notice that I'm just saying we can take y to be negative 1 and x to be square root of 3. I'm not saying they have to be these numbers. Why not? Because any multiples of this will work as well. I can also say y is equal to negative 2 and x is equal to 2 square root of 3. But it doesn't matter because when I divide that, I will still end up with the same ratio anyway, right? So, you don't need to be fancy. Just look at this and that. But you have to really stay in. You have to really be sure you say, we can take y to be this number and x to be that number. Anyway, from here, we can draw picture, draw the triangle and things like that, the usual business. So, from this, we have x is equal to positive square root of 3. That means I will have a picture right here. This is x value. Let's say this is square root of 3, and that's positive. And y is negative 1, so I will have to go down right here, right? So this is negative 1 for the y value. So we see that we have a special right triangle. This is what? This is 30 degrees, but we are all adults now, so this is pi over 6. However, it goes this way, right? It's below the x-axis. We are rotating clockwise. So this is negative pi over 6. But is this the only answer that we have? No, because you can also say from here to here, that's the same as 11 pi over 6. And that will also make this work as well. But the truth is, use negative pi over 6 because of the um, range of the inverse tangent. And this is, in fact, the answer when you take the inverse tangent on both sides that the calculator will give you. Because uh, the range of inverse tangent, it goes from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. 
But anyway, this is one of the answer. And if you use this answer, if you say, let's just say, take alpha to be negative pi over 6. So you see, we have the a value and the alpha already. So what are we trying to say? First of all, let me just write this down again. We are saying that sine x plus square root of 3 cosine x, this is equal to, okay, I have the cosine value, I mean cosine function, the x stays the same. Once again, keep in mind, this is only going to work if the angles inside are the same right here, okay? So this is okay. But this right here, on the right-hand side, you shift the cosine function. Anyway, alpha in our case is negative pi over 6, like that. And now, if I want to use this alpha value, which a value am I going to use? The answer to that is, I'm going to use the positive version of that. So this is the positive 2 times cosine of x minus pi over 6. Why? The answer to that is, well, the reason to that is, whenever if you draw a picture, if the triangle ends up on the first and the fourth quadrant like this, okay, you use the past the a, okay? Because that's what the inverse tangent will give, give you, and you use the past the a value for that. All right, now, what if I bring the negative down, so that means we have past the 1 over negative square root of 3. In that case, let me just tell you, we can take y to be past the 1 and x to be negative square root of 3. All right? And in this case, we'll have a different picture, so let's go ahead and do that right here as well. x is equal to negative square root of 3, so that means we have the uh, triangle right, being this right here. This is negative square root of 3, and y is past the 1, so it's like that. And when I form the reference triangle like this, we know that this angle is also pi over 6, right? So let me just indicate that. However, when you measure angle, you don't just look at this. You want to go from here to here. And because we know the whole thing is pi from here to here, so from here to here, this is going to be pi minus pi over 6, namely 5 pi over 6, okay? So in this picture here, I can tell you that we can take alpha to be 5 pi over 6, okay? Now, if the triangle happens to be on the left-hand side, we will have to use the negative a value. So I will tell you that sine of x plus square root of 3 cosine x, this is equal to negative 2 times cosine of x. This is a positive version for this angle, so we will say we add 5 pi over 6 like this. Both of the answers are legitimate. Because once again, you are just talking about shiftment, right, of the cosine function. And of course, this is not the only answer for this alpha, because you can have, you, you could have gone from here to here, and that's going to be negative 7 pi over 6. And you can also put it here, but in that case, be sure you use negative a as well. But anyway, it really depends on what alpha you use with the a value.